Your Steve Jones Show podcast will start shortly. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Brewers Outlet, your beverage supermarket on Reagan Street in Sunbury. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, welcome back. Great to have you with us. Today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Here we are, Penn State, Ohio State this weekend. So stock up now. Make sure you're fully stocked and ready to go. And by the way, you might as well think about Thanksgiving. You have a lot of people. You're either going to go someplace for Thanksgiving or people are coming over your place for Thanksgiving. Make sure you're fully stocked and ready to go either way. And that means... The best selection of beer anywhere. Imports Domestics Microbrews. So you'll be able to get what everybody likes. Some people really enjoy wine coolers. Plenty of those. Water. Lots of soft drinks. Snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and out every day. And the pickle bar led by the barrels and the dills. Indeed, second to none. Although, Buner likes garlic. And uh, it's also that time of the year with Thanksgiving uh, coming up. And here we are now on the 22nd of November. I mean, we're talking, what, eight, what, 33 days away from Christmas? Holiday season's coming up. It's time to think about getting gift cards from our good friends at Brewer's Outlet. Let's let everybody know how much you care. Brewer's Outlet gift card. All right, talk about the best in the business, Sunbury Motors. Great, great sales staff, great staff. Really great uh, service department, and boy, do they have some incredible product across the line. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Okay, our play-by-play call of the day. Now, you know how I feel about flopping. Celtics played the Clippers in the Staples Center, and Patrick Beverly, does he get hit in the face? Yes. Sprawling to the floor in agony? No. Here's our play-by-play call of the day between the Celtics and the Clippers. Back out Tatum. Tatum fires, won't go, but a foul. No, an offensive foul is going to be called. I think there were two different whistles and perhaps two different calls. Tatum called for the offensive foul. Did he kick his... No, it's his right arm. Watch what he does. He's, he pulls back and is... Yeah. <laughs> Beverly, that's quite the, the sell job, but you caught it, Doris. That's right. Brad Stevens not happy. Patrick Beverly's reaction... I mean, he barely oh. First of all, his head's got to snap the other direction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the world of the NBA. Uh, that was the ultimate sell job by pa- Patrick Beverly. He got grazed and, oh, <laughs> you're an NBA official and you got fooled by that? All right. <laughs> Penn State, Ohio State coming up tomorrow. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record, joins us. Frank, welcome back. Always a pleasure, my friend. Doing great, Steve. Had a good day up there on Saturday, right? Not yeah. too cold. I'm exactly. Inside, we're, we're, in the press box. I know. <laughs> Jack Ham and I were looked at each other. We were walking back from the Jordans. They're like, this was brutal. <laughs> We're soft, well, Frank. You know we're what? soft. I, I hear that extended forecast could be some snow showers Saturday morning in Columbus. Tomorrow. Well, we're indoors on the road. So, oh, yeah, well, and, I, and I saw the extended forecast. <laughs> okay, that'll be interesting. Uh, let's start with this. Uh, the the 18-play, 75-yard drive. I've looked at the end of Iowa, a couple first downs when they needed it. Looked at the end of Michigan, first down when they needed it. Now this. What are we seeing now in this stretch for Penn State offensively when they need to put together something? Well, one of the things, one of my big questions was this is the season that, to me, the offensive line really did have to show market improvement or 
truly. And, and, and to me, that's just another exclamation point that they've done that. And it's so important because, you know, you have other examples you mentioned earlier in the season. This was the biggest example that they have come together as a group and those guys are playing, I think, up to, you know, media fan potential. Like, hey, they were good recruits. They're, they're producing. And I think this changes my perspective a little bit about this game coming up on Saturday. Almost injuries or not, I'm more confident right now, I think, in Penn State's offense, um, mm. mostly because of what you just said. All right. So uh, the fake punt. Uh, preparation is so important in all of this. What did that? What should that tell everybody? You know, you're not. It's not going to be perfect, but what does it tell everybody that they were ready for it? It, it tells me just don't outthink yourself, and if you want to try to get the fourth and one, go right. for it. Right. Just run a play. Run your best play. Right. I don't understand all of the timeouts, the fake punt, the calling off, the fake punt. It's like it's way too complicated to me. I don't. I don't get it. All right. Yeah, it, it seems like a wrong place to do it, right? You're, sure. Isn't the idea of a fake to be so that you can actually fool somebody? Right. Uh, I mean, anyway, big play, though. Penn State took advantage of uh, Indiana's miscues, which you got to be able to do. Yeah, they did. Uh, all right. Now let's get to the, the next part of this. Uh, early on, Indiana did what Indiana's done all year. They scored a lot of points in the first quarter, but they hit big plays. Then Penn State took that away for two and a half quarters, but then Indiana hit a couple big plays or, you know, hit a big play in the fourth quarter. What are you seeing there, Frank? Well, I mean, Penn State's defense is adjusting the last two weeks. To me, they just have taken too long to adjust to something you knew in a sense. Well, I guess Minnesota did throw some different stuff at them, but you knew yeah. they, they could throw the ball down the field right. and got made arguably the best receiving core in the country, or right. not the country, the Big Ten. Um, you knew Indiana was going to be able to throw the ball. So Penn State, I guess, give them credit for making adjustments. Um, you know, I'm just – I think, hey, we don't go to practice. We're not in the meetings, but I think a lot of fans and media are, would be, wow, what's kind of happened to Penn State's defense because um, – Really expected them to be able to get more pressure on the quarterback, especially the defensive ends. And um, I know they're playing young guys in the secondary, but there's some issues with tackling and such back there. So then, when you play a team like Ohio State, it just makes you just it makes you worry. I guess if you're a fan, I mean, how do you combat that at this point? Okay, so going into this game, when you've had a chance to watch Ohio State, Virginia State, they're really, really good. But let's start with Justin Fields. His accuracy is something people wondered about. I don't think anybody wonders about it anymore, Frank. No, and I don't think people knew at all what truly what type of quarterback he could be till he started getting going this year because stars, recruiting stars or not, whatever team you're playing for or not, you got to prove it for a few weeks in a row as a starter. And, man, he's done that and way more and – the interesting connections, you know, he could have been Penn State starting quarterback at uh, one point. Sure. Um, ends up at their biggest rival. It's crazy how this has all come about. Um, yeah, I look at their numbers. I just don't – I don't know what to think because if you look at their numbers 10 games in, you think, are they the greatest college football team ever? I mean, what? where's the last football team? No one's been within 25 points of them in a game. No, I don't know. Does Alabama even have that in their past like that? Are they that good? I mean, they have been, I guess, but at some point, something's got to go. You know, you somebody's got to figure something out to at least get them in a four quarter game. You would hope, right? I mean, I don't know if this is the week, but I just, I don't. I'm almost. They've been so good, I don't even know what to think. I mean, and then and then their defense is ranked number one in the country in like three or four categories. Right. Several categories. Chase Young getting back. I mean, I, I really don't care how it came about. The bottom line is he's back. Uh, so being back, let's talk about the the potential impact he has on any game he's in. Well, he looks like the most ferocious defensive player in the country. So it's not even the stats when I'm when I say that. It's the way he plays the game. There's intimidation and fear in the way he plays. That means that means something at a whole different level, right? You got a, so the Penn State's tackles 
you know, Rasheed Walker's done a tremendous job. Yes. Great that we haven't really had to bring his name up. That's a great sign. But how, I mean, and he passed the test at Iowa. I don't know dealing with this guy who's been sitting and waiting for this now for two weeks. Right. It's going to be a tough assignment. I think, wasn't Chase the guy who made the tackle on the fourth and five? He did. He did. Yep. And made a great play, I think. Yeah. Got got to the inside, made the play. Yep. Right. So, I mean. They just got superstars everywhere. I it, Penn State to me, Penn State's offense needs to try to keep pace. And I know that that might sound silly to some with some of the struggles, but I think uh, the, you almost I can almost see maybe somehow Sean Clifford, who you know can keep getting better each week, if you can get Justin Shorter, like somebody like Justin Shorter, finally and really involved. Yeah. It's some big plays. Try to give your defense a chance to hang in there and adjust like they have the last two weeks, I guess. You know? I mean, they got to score points because you know Ohio State's going to. What role can special teams play in this game? Well, prob- I mean, huge. Two years ago, Saquon took the opening kick back. I think yeah. that set a tune. Penn State has not had a kick. Surprisingly, I think, to some. I mean, not had a – an unflagged return for a touchdown this year. Yeah. I think with their talent, Penn State's talent, and with the move to Joe Lorig, who kind of that was part of his resume, I think he expected it by now. So um, you got to have something. I mean, this is a game that doesn't look even in, in a lot of ways, so you got to make up for it. And special to me, special teams would be a breakthrough, you know, can K, hopefully KJ can play, I would think, at full at 100%. You know, and if he is, I mean, he's got a, you, you know, you would hope for a big a breakthrough from from him, especially on kickoff returns, because they've had chances, I think, with a kickoff return. Right. And, of course, Blake Gilligan, with the Gunners, doing a great job of giving him a longer field to work with. I think that's been, uh, obviously, one of the keys, too. I mean, because James talks about the field position battle all the time, and it's really important. Well, his punter and his gunners have allowed him to do that. Oh, the best combination, maybe the best combination in the country. I mean, Penn State has covered punts. I don't know if I've ever seen him cover punts like that, or right. ever. And, um, I mean, they've done a pretty good job with kickoffs, too. But, Blake, you know, you wouldn't worry about them. I think the offensive line has done better. Um, you know, can they get uh, some big moments? So, so we kidded Micah Parsons after the game. Hey, your first college interception, what happened? And he laughed, and he said, you know, at the end he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saving it for when we really need it. <laughs> so maybe that would mean the Saturday, I guess. Well, it is the, really the only game out there this week. This is the, in the uh, SEC, the week where everybody plays a non-conference game and they're right. not exactly the marquee <laughs> of the marquee. I've always, no. I've always felt that to the college football playoff committee, it's my personal opinion, I always felt it was like a slap in the face. We'll do whatever we darn well please. And right in the middle of when you're ranking, we aren't going to play. Right. That's a good point. I never kind of looked at it quite like that, but that's that's a good point, you know. When's the last time two top ten teams – how often – or maybe I should say this. How often do two top ten teams play where one's favored by basically 20 points? Um, right. That doesn't happen. I, this is probably – I mean, is this big Penn State's biggest – point spread. I mean, their biggest one they've overcome in recent history would be, I guess, the Wisconsin game, Bill O'Brien's last game. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. were more than 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. And because I think I would think three years ago, maybe it was more like 16, 17 they were underdogged against Ohio State. Yeah. And right. Yeah, it might be. You know, For what it matters. Right. But sure. Um, it, I think it's, it's the same kind of game, though. I think a lot of people outside of maybe Penn State fans or such. I, I don't know how, how much are you looking at this game from the outside? What chance are you giving Penn State? Right. They got to prove, you know, they got to do some things they haven't done the last. I don't know. I'd be interested to see how much if they try some things on offense that in particular that they have not done, we have not seen yet. When is the last time that Ricky Ronnie has called a shovel pass after cover, calling about, what, four or five in his first game at the festival? Yeah. I mean, things like right. that. Is there sure. something they see that Ohio State's defense hasn't really had to defend yet 
you, I, I mean, just thoughts going through my head. Yeah, yeah sure. No, I understand completely. Uh, and that's, you know, but again, I look at what the SEC does. You're right in the middle of the college football playoff. Yeah. And they right. just basically go, eh. Uh, and I'm saying, doesn't hurt them. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course do it, it doesn't hurt. Reason. I know it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't hurt them one iota. That's I why know. they continue to do it. It helps them, right? Because you get sure a break does. when your bodies are sore and when you need a, a, a little bit of a, you know, take back, give the starters a little chance to recover. Yeah, well, so we're sitting there and you've got a group of individuals out there. Well, boy, the SEC is really smart about this. Really. Right? Excuse me, that's not your job to say they're really smart about it. It's your job right. to say they're ranking the college football <laughs> playoff right now and everybody's going, ha, ha, guess what, we can get away with it. <laughs> that's what they right. do. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I mean, and I don't know how much, I mean, if you had the choice, would you want to do that if you're the Big Ten, though? Oh, I don't right. know. Uh, I mean, it would not be popular with the fans. Right. I mean, and I, I, see, I, yeah. This is still, to me, it's still the fans game. There you go. I mean, you don't want to see it. We don't want to see it. Uh, so why would you want to do it? I mean, it's interesting how Penn State will be playing. Don't they open the season with Wisconsin? Yes. Again? Yeah, they First do. First game of the year, big conference game. I mean, do you want that? I guess. But you better be ready for it. I guess. Well, I mean, this is where I'll, – I'll say this about SEC scheduling. This is where I do think they're very clever with it. Even though it's an eight-game schedule, they stagger out the games in such a way where, okay, one week uh, Florida's playing South Carolina. Hey, big game. Uh, then the next week uh, Tennessee is playing uh, uh, Auburn. Big game. They stagger it out where you feel like there's a big game every week even though they only play eight conference games. Yeah. And people forget there is still the difference between conference games between those two leagues. I, I think people know it, but they maybe forget it. I mean, the Big Ten has to play an extra one of these games. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They have to play nine. The SEC plays eight. ACC plays eight. Guess which two conferences have been in every single college football playoff? Well, and the ACC has a – so they have they only play eight, and they they got a week conference and then you can schedule whoever else you want for that extra out of conference game so clemson is they really want it they don't really have to be tested they be tested the least of anyone right exactly now to their credit they are really really good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay uh, so, well yeah there's that too. so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put down the how good their football team is but whom they have the the, the teams they have to play don't exactly Make you you sit back and go yeah okay fine they'll win that by a hundred. Well, and there is a wear and tear factor I think on teams. So everybody who's looking at Penn State's right. three or four that's games. A, that's a good point. Schedule in the middle. Can they get by Iowa and then Michigan and then? So you win the games, but how much do you pay for winning to get those games in that stretch? I mean, I I don't know the answer. I'm just wondering if. That's something that a team like Clemson doesn't have to go through. Right, exactly. That's a good point. And it is, uh, you know, something to wonder about. Frank, it's always a pleasure. Thanks yeah. so much. Enjoyed seeing you on Saturday. We yeah. walked into the box together. We had a good time. Yeah, I look forward, and I will get a chance, hopefully, to see you this weekend. So look forward awesome. to it. Good. Yeah. Getting you there is very important to us. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks so much, Frank. All right. Take care. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record, one of the best in the business. Always appreciate Frank very much. Don't forget, noon tomorrow, the kickoff, 10.30, the airtime. Here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, also Eagle 107 tomorrow, uh, Bucknell and Syracuse from the Carrier Dome with Doug Birdsong. That's also a noon start tomorrow. And the Steelers, of course, will take on the Bengals Sunday on 100.9 The Valley. The Eagles, of course, in action on Eagle 107. So it's another big, big weekend of sports. Today's show brought to you by our good friends at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury. The Beverage Supermarket imports domestics microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drinks, snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day in the pickle bar. Led by the barrels and the dills, everybody all together now, including you in Mifflinburg. Indeed, second to none. Buner likes the garlic, by the way. That's fine. It's a wide variety. Don't forget about Brewers Outlet gift cards, too. Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. 
We're in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. We'll hear from Shaka Tony in the final half hour of the show as Penn State gets ready for Ohio State tomorrow in Columbus. Again, it will be a noon kickoff. Our airtime is set for 1030 here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Looking forward to the final half hour and Shaka Tony on News Radio 1070 WKOK. When it comes to car buying, there's the other guy's way, and then there's the SMC way. The other guys force you into a vehicle you really don't want. The Sunbury Motors way lets you take the time you need to browse, ask questions, and take the test drive and think on it. For over 100 years, the Mertz family and all their employees have made your experience the most pleasant one you'll ever have. The other guys won't offer you the best price for your trade, no matter how much they say they will. The SMC way is their promise to provide you with the most money the market shows your vehicle is worth. The SMC way is to offer you all applications applicable factory rebates on new vehicles and generous discounts. Looking for a pre-owned vehicle? The SMC Way checks each vehicle in a 200-mile radius to determine the lowest price, then beat it. It's the lowest price promise, just part of the SMC Way. The choice is up to you. The other guy's way or the SMC Way? The SMC Way wins every time. Sunbury Motors Company in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and at sunburymotors.com. Selling more cars and satisfying more customers for over 100 years. Party time, game time, or just fun time. Doesn't matter what time it is because it's Brewers Outlet time. The Beverage Supermarket has the area's largest beer selection. Imports, microbrews, ciders, and domestics. Pick from over 100 ice-cold 12-packs and dozens of 24-ounce singles. Soda, snacks, hot sauces, fresh roasted peanuts. Make it one-stop party shopping and don't forget the pickle bar. So whatever you're celebrating or just doing it up, Brewers Outlet Reagan Street Sunbury wants to see you. And thank you for your years of patronage. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Final half hour for the week as we get ready for Penn State and Ohio State tomorrow in Columbus. Another absolute playoff game. The Big Ten Championship, not just the Big Ten East, but the Big Ten Championship has been determined by the winner of this game in each of the last three years. This will be the fourth consecutive year that's happened. You feel like the Big Ten champion is coming out of this game for the fourth straight year. Well, they'll play tomorrow in Columbus at noon. 10.30 10.30 will be the airtime. We'll hear from Shaka Tony in a few moments. But first, we want to tell you that today's show is brought to you by our great friends at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Imports, domestics, microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. Remember, Thanksgiving is coming up. So you got games tomorrow. You got Penn State, of course, and Ohio State tomorrow. You got the Steelers and the Eagles coming up. And Thanksgiving coming up. You need to stock up. So, And you know what people like in, in your household. You know when you go someplace, you know what they like there as well. So, and they've got the selection. Imports, domestic, microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. You also know that people like wine coolers, plenty of those. Okay, Soft drinks, always a big hit. Water. Okay, Snacks, lots of snacks. You know you're going to snack this weekend. You know at Thanksgiving you're going to snack. You know that. And... The pickle bar, you know, by the way, they roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. And the pickle bar, led by the barrels and the dills, okay, over there in Sealands Grove, you know it is second to none. Led by the barrels and the dills, I might add, even though Buner does prefer garlic. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And don't forget about Brewers Outlet gift cards. We're hitting the holiday season, a Brewers Outlet gift card. Nice and easy to take care of, but also lets everybody know that you do care. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. You want to deal with the best. Sales staff, incredible. Product, great. And the service department takes care of everything in the life of the vehicle. All at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. One of the keys tomorrow will be, can Penn State get pressure on Justin Fields? Wisconsin did it. They were able to sack him five times. Last two games, Maryland and Rutgers, they have not laid a glove on Justin Fields. You have to get him into a spot, if if it is possible, to make him 
make decisions faster. He's had a lot of time to scan and make decisions at his own pace. One of the guys that will have the big responsibility of trying to get him to a different pace is Shaka Tony. He had an opportunity to talk with the media earlier this week. Shaka, just uh, curious, first of all, when you, you sat down and, and you, you watched some initial film of Ohio State, you know, what were your first, first impressions? Uh, physicality, speed, um, real good understanding of their scheme. They, run, they do what they do, and they do it very well. Um, great athletes, well coached, well disciplined. You know, overall, can you just evaluate the, the pass rush for us? I mean, you guys are 11th in the nation, but more than half of those sacks have come against Purdue and, and Idaho. So so what is the dynamic there, and, and how do you feel like you guys have been progressing in the week since? Um, I'm not really sure I'm understanding what you're asking. Um, I'm just curious. The uh, oh. Sorry. Uh, are there any concerns with this pass rush? Can you evaluate, you know, how that's progressed as the season's gone on? Because you guys do have a lot of sacks, but it's kind of top-heavy against those two teams. Um, well, if you watch the film, you see a lot of people, they're getting rid of the ball fast, um, a lot of mass protection. Their teams aren't letting us just rush, uh, meet other defensive ends, the rest of the D-line. They're not just letting us tee off on their quarterback. You know, they're coming into the game with a plan, a scheme, and things like that. Um, I could tell you firsthand, a lot of the O-linemen that I have watched on film, I'll come into the game and get something entirely different from their sets to the timing of their punching of their hands. So, you know, kind of things kind of spring up on us, and we're making plays as we make them, and we're just going to keep working hard. You know, our group, we've done a lot of things well. we got a lot of things to work on, but we're going to keep getting better. back here from your perspective what uh what excites you about this week's matchup and what are the challenges you see um just another opportunity to play football um i know a lot of people that don't make it to this level um from my friends i have friends that have passed away um friends that have been murdered and things like that and i'm just grateful for another opportunity to play again um and what was the second part of that question um it's always a challenge to go on the road and win games um, winning isn't easy. If it is, everybody would do it. You know, you got to come in and be prepared. You got to work hard throughout the week. Got to do whatever you have to do to make sure that you can be one and on one and on Saturday. Hey, Shaka, how are you? I'm good. Good. And, and preparing for this game, how unique of a talent is Justin Fields? What you're contending with him at quarterback, and did you get to know him or meet him at all when he was a recruit committed to Penn State? Nah, I didn't have a chance to know Justin Fields. Um, other guys that are in his uh, age age range, as far as like his class, he told me he's a really good guy. Um, he didn't come here. You know, he made a decision for himself, and I leave no player at fault for that. You know, every program is different, and you need to find the best fit for you. So, you know, can't wait to meet him. Can't wait to shake his hand. You know, I I heard he's a pretty swell guy. Um, I feel real bad for him for what he went through at Georgia. Uh, If that was true, you know, nobody deserves to go through that. How do you deal with him as a player? I know you you said shake his hand. I'm sure you want to also also hit him a bit. Um, How do you kind of counter a player who has the abilities to to do so much, you know, without really help? Um, You know, he's... He's special, of course, but, you know, we don't single out any other player more than anybody else as far as a D-line does. Uh, most quarterbacks you're going to play in the Big Ten are going to be good or great or do something well. Um, you just got to approach him the right way. You can't let him get out the pocket and things like that. You know, you have to do your job as a defensive end. Um, he makes plays on his with his arm and his legs, so we have to do whatever we have to do, you know, to try to keep him in, keep him in check. And if I could ask about one of your offensive teammates, Pat Fryermuth was not named the semifinalist for national tight end of the year. Eight semifinalists named yesterday. He was not on the list. Any reaction to, to, to the fact that he's not there? Um, a reaction from me or just, um, you know, I think individual awards are always nice, but I'm pretty sure if we go one and this week, he's going to forget all about that awards list. You know, those things. They can be biased. Um, sometimes people can all get overlooked. It doesn't always tell the full story. Um, Pat is hardworking, and if he keeps doing what he's doing, he's in the NFL, a first-round guy. He's not going to think about anything, think about a worst list that he missed out on. He's going to think about the times that he had here, just like the rest of us. You know, Individual accolades are okay, 
but championships and just enjoying your time with your brothers mean all the world more to you. Do you look forward to games that are going to be harder? Um, I don't look at no game, no bigger or no smaller than, uh, than any other. You know, you see upsets, you see people get blown out, you see anything can happen in college football. So if you think one team is so much better than the other, you know, you just, it's just a bad approach. You know, we say 1-0 because that truly means something to us. Um, anybody can get beat. It doesn't matter how much talent you have or what you're doing. Every dog has his day, and everybody has a great approach to the game. You know, you have to treat everybody with the same amount of respect. How you doing, Shaka? Over here, sorry. How you doing, Shaka? How you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask, James was saying during his press conference that this is going to be a heavyweight fight, you know, one team is going to throw a big blow and the other one's going to counter. Um, do you have any memories of any games during your college, high school, whatever career of, you know, a true heavyweight fight where you're just going back and forth with another team? Um, first game come to mind is my city championship against Archbishop Wood my senior year. Um, game came down to the wire. Uh, Anthony Russo, shout out Russo. That's one of my Philly guys. You know, I, I know that he's doing well at Temple. Uh, he threw a game winning pick, game ceiling pick. End of the game, uh, I myself was in his face. He threw it to my he threw it to my running back slash linebacker. Um, I think about the Iowa game when we went to Iowa the first time. Uh, that was just huge, and I was a freshman at that time. I, I probably played four, maybe five snaps, but I just remember the emotion from it. Um, the Big Ten, Big Ten championship that we won, the Rose Bowl, you know, all those games. And football truly is a momentum sport. And if you don't like react to the momentum the right way, you can get drowned out. You know, people can get down in a hole and just let the game go. And it's like we'll play next week. But then you have a team like we just watched Oklahoma come back against Baylor. You know, you just got to keep fighting. You know, if the momentum isn't swinging your way, like you said, you got to counter back, throw a hook. Jab, duck, do something, but make sure that you'll never stop fighting. Hey, Shaka. Uh, Coach Franklin mentioned earlier like his great to elite comment from last year, and obviously when he said it, it went viral. What do you remember about the comment and kind of everything he said that night about how you, how you guys needed to take that next step as a program? Um, I remember the comment, but I, I less more remember how I came off, but more what the message was. And being elite is truly is something that's not easy to do. You know, you're talking about being a top four team in the country to get to the playoffs. You're talking about being the last team standing to win a championship. You know, you have to be elite, and little things do matter, and you got to find a way every single day to beat elite teams like Ohio State, like Clemson, like Alabama. You know, you can't say you want to be elite and not be willing to put the work in to do it. You have to come out every single day from January to December with a approach that you're going to be the best you every single day. And, you know, I think our team has responded well since that game. Um, I think we come out the right way this year. We've had a lot of success and our year isn't done, but I think we are making those steps to become an elite team. And uh, are you still close with Deion Barnes? You guys still talk? Yes. I actually was just speaking on the other day. Yeah. yeah. What was it about? Can I ask? Uh, just talking about film, um, talking about things that I've done this year, things that I haven't done well. Um, I believe in using all resources at my hands. Um, I'll ask a guy on the street, a homeless man, if he played defensive end about a technique. It doesn't matter to me. I love football. I love to learn. So anybody, any tips, any of you guys, it doesn't matter. I'm always, I'm always open to talk about football. You know, you never can, you never can settle for learning. And I just think it's a huge impact on being able to get grades by using the resources at your disposal. We have heard a lot about your knowledge of football, and I'm, I'm assuming your position specifically with that. Could you give us a progress report on a true freshman, Adisa Isaac, a guy that we've seen here and there, but you've seen him every day? Man, I'll tell you all now, Adisa Isaac going to be a first-round pick. That kid is coachable, coachable. Like, I wish I had that level of maturity at his age. It's crazy. He just turned 18. We always tease him, call him Young D's, or just something about, like a pub, or just something about him being young because he don't talk much. You know, he's one of those freshmen that he's a dream freshman. Don't get in trouble, um, ask a lot of questions, but he knows his place. He, he, he's just always around. He's a sponge. Like, um, I did some things like him that I'm, the things that he's doing now, 
I was, I'm doing at this age now, and it's just really impressive. Um, I, I believe I already told people, you can come out here, and he'll ask me for a pass rush rep, what should I do? I can say, do dive, do three burpees, a jumping jack, club rip, and then spin and get a sack, and he'll do it exactly where I said it. Um, does no attitude comes from a great family home. I I, I know he's going to be special, and y'all can quote me in a few years when he's getting ready to be a top pick in the NFL. He's going to be special. Promise you that. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned you you like to get advice from you know anywhere you can. You know you're seeking knowledge. So where is the maybe the the source of advice that that's meant a lot to you that maybe you didn't expect. Um, you know, by that I mean, you know, what's maybe the most unlikely source of the best advice you've received? Hmm. You know what? Give me a second thing back to that. You know what? No, I do have an answer. Um, my niece, um, I remember red shirt, red shirt year, you know, it's hard red shirting if a lot of people doesn't know. You know, you could feel separated from the team. You could feel alone. You're not home anymore. You, t- you don't want to do school. You just want to go back to being a man in high school. And my niece, she was younger at that time, and she's. And one, one, one Thanksgiving, um, I just, just, I've, I'm finally able to come home, uh, seen her in a long time, and she, and she seen I was down, and she heard my. Apparently, she heard my mom over the phone with my sister, I like, talking about how I was feeling, and she just came and gave me a hug, and she just told me. No matter what you have to do, just get it done and just know we'll support you. And it was so special to me. And my niece, I, I treat, her, treat her like she's my best friend. Um, my, sis, her, my sister gets mad at me because the way I talk to her sometimes because it comes off as like I treat her like a boy. I don't mean to, but that's just that's the dy- dynamic of our relationship. And she, she just, and I've just lived with that every single day. You got to give what you, you have to get what you have to get done, you know. Sometimes it's going to be snow outside and you got to shovel your car just to get to work. You got to get it done, you know. Whatever you have to do, it's, it's, it's doable. It, nothing's put on your plate that you can't handle, and I'm a firm believer in that. Is she, like, 10 years younger than you, one year nah, younger? Nah, she's, uh, she was probably about 13-something years younger than me at that time. And she's pretty young. She's a lot younger than me. She's older now, though, but she's a lot younger than about five. Yeah, she'd been about five. Growing off of kind of your your love of the game, when did that start for you? I mean, were you a little kid who fell in love with it, and how did you fall in love with it? Second year of Little League football, I fell in love. First year, I hated it. Um, I was that kid. I was smart. I've always, like, understood football, but I didn't always like it. My first year, I, I just refused to do things the way the coach wanted me to do because it was like I didn't understand why. I was one of those kids that always asked why, and he never. my coach never really explained it to me, um, but he told me, like, I want you to come back and play again next year. So I came back and played it for the same weight class, and he finally started to teach me and un- unveil parts of the game to me. And I've just been in love ever since, from playing Madden to NCAA to anything that has to do with football. That's what I do. If I open up my phone right now, I'm sitting there listening to sports podcasts and just going things to talk about around the league. I love football. It's, I could sit all day and just watch football and not even notice. Um, the se- that second year, you know, I started to make plays. I think that's what became more fun for me. But, you know, at a young age, I definitely, definitely, definitely realized that this game was the one for me. All right. Oh. I was going to ask if that's kind of how you and John Reed started bonding. I mean, obviously both. Well, he's kind of a, I think you guys declare him a Philly guy but no John, John's a Philly guy yeah. sorry to the Jersey people John is definitely claimed by all Philadelphians especially athletes um, me and John actually bond over video games first and then football you know John he'll tell you he's not like he don't really like, like he likes to watch his football so Penn State games things about him or people that just play corner me I like to watch the entire sport you know from the quarterback to the safety to the coach you know I like to watch everything John's roof like position orientated but 
our love of football, like our conversations about how, like the IQ level of it. You know, I learned so much from him, like from outside of the front seven. You know, I think you know learning the back seven, back four helps you too. You know, you'll know. All right, well, if it's man to man, this ball might be coming out early because maybe the guy get beat on a slant route, or if I got if I know my corner got a deep third, and I know that if it's a goal route, I know I got a little bit more time, or the quarterback might hit a one two three go because it's covered two, and I gotta get my hand up you know all those things have made me a lot better so john has really elevated like my knowledge of what's going on around me more than what's going on outside the front seven yeah he uh he put he put a lot into the computer um i i purchased everything for the ncaa i paid for my own money but john is a computer whiz (laughs) and he helped me learn like he helped me learn different things that i can put in there um like a coolant um, my miles from how to I can recalibrate it like John is smart smart so he, he's, he's somebody that you want to have in your corner you know your TV break down you don't know why John somebody that come in take it off plug in three different things and next you know your TV is fine again so that's my guy Shaka Tony uh, he's one of those guys you probably don't really know but I'll tell you when you get a chance to know him he is a terrific guy Really, really like Shaka Tony a lot as a person, football player. I think he's be he's really developed into an outstanding all around defensive end. He now plays the run really well, and of course, we know he's such a terrific pass rusher. They'll need that pass rush tomorrow against Justin Fields in Ohio State. All right, today's show brought to you by Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street in Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. Time to stock up for the weekend. Time to stock up for Thanksgiving. Imports, domestics, microbrews, best selection of beer anywhere. Wine coolers, water, soft drinks, snacks. They roast their peanuts fresh and hot every day. And the pickle bar, led by the barrels of the dills. Indeed, yes, second to none. All at Brewers Outlet, Reagan Street, and Sunbury, the beverage supermarket. And we're in the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Penn State football tomorrow, noon the kickoff. 10.30 10.30 the airtime, and you'll hear it right here on News Radio 1070 WKOK.